Okay, today is Thursday, February 13th, 2020, and this is the Northampton Council on Aging uh, meeting. I'm calling it to order. I do need what's in your hand, Jay. The first part of the meeting would be the public session, and everybody that wants to speak, have you signed up? Okay. We have two, three speakers today. And it's a three-minute um, limit. Oh. So the first person on the list is Peter Jones. I signed up to listen, not to speak. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, thank you. Then you have more than three minutes. <laughs> yes. Kimberly Lambert. Uh, I'm here today to talk about the rules and regulations for also known as the welcoming book, I think. Do we really want the first welcoming book of this senior center to contain almost two pages of exclusivity regulations? Page 10 and 11, two pages. I think it's a shame to intimidate those elders who may have chronic conditions, illnesses, or disorders. They deserve our open arms and a welcome, a big welcome, and your compassion. I appeal to the board members to rethink this direction that you're going in. We need the mayor to attend the next Council on Aging meeting to see this book and to hear us. Complaints, page 11. The Senior Center needs a grievance procedure, as most organizations have. We have a right to an appeals process of peers. Not one stop micromanagement. It's not age friendly. Staff and director should have new updated training on conflict resolution, not ideas and suggestions persecution. Today's seniors expect to be heard and included, not regulated with rules. Oh, I'd like to add that um, the input I gave at the last meeting was not in the minutes. It was not fully um, dictated in the minutes of the last meeting. Okay, thanks, Kim. Thanks. Elaine Williams. Good afternoon. Um, uh, as we were rewriting this new uh, handbook, one I was reviewing the one we have on, on hand now, and under the standards of independence, um, I'm not sure where this list of things came from, but it certainly does not feel appropriate to be incorporated into this Northampton Senior Center. Some of the things on it are um, able to toilet themselves, able to maintain good personal hygiene, um, able to feed themselves, monitor special dietary needs, these all seem like it's something from an adult daycare that people pay to bring their family members or friends into and have them supervise. This does not at all seem appropriate for Northampton Senior Center to have these kind of guidelines. What do we do? Ask somebody, are you able to go to the bathroom by yourself? I mean, if somebody comes in, um, they have to uh, be oriented to the current surroundings. Do we ask them these questions when they come in to join the senior center? And if this isn't something we're doing, this all the whole thing, um, I'm not sure where it came from, but it does not seem appropriate for the Northampton Senior Center. Um, and I think everybody on the board should read it and, and come to your own conclusion. And if so, it should be revised to fit our needs and not the needs of the daycare. Uh, one other question I had is, um, Marie, are we getting the books back for sale, the paperbacks and the hardcovers? So I want to remind you that we don't answer questions. Oh, I'm we sorry. just listen and, and. Oh, okay. Well, I'm hoping we get the books back. You know, they were here at a time, and we did make money. It seems like the city is looking to raise our taxes because we need money, and yet we stopped the sale of paperback and hardcover books that were four to five thousand dollar income with no work on our part, except if we had a moldy book, which I guess was the reason they stopped, which seems really far-fetched, in my opinion. Um, 
that we could start it up again, check the books before we put them out on the shelves, and regain some income that we had lost from, not selling them. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Okay, so next part of the agenda is to review the minutes. And, um, does anybody have any changes they'd like to make to the minutes? From uh, January 9th minutes. So, if not, I would like to um, entertain... Um, so moved. <laughs> thank you. And who second, second. To, to accept the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, we passed. Just want to remind people that we are on mic this time, and um, if you're talking to your neighbor, it, it will be picked up because these are very sensitive mics. So if you can all just be careful. We want to speak, speak toward the mic. Okay, announcements. I know we have a couple of announcements. Uh, Jean, did you have an announcement? Yeah. Yes, I just wanted to let people know that today at 5 o'clock um, there's an art reception for Kathy Keneally's art that's hanging already in the art hallway. Um, but if you wanted, anybody wanted to stop by there um, and join the reception, so today, you're welcome. Yeah. It's from 5 to 6.30. Anything else? Someone, I thought someone else told me they had another one. Okay, thank you. So, program coordinators report. That would be Nancy. Sure. Come on up here, Nancy. Oh, I have to come up there. Yeah, you can come near one of the microphones. Or you, okay. can, or you can speak. Oh, there, yeah. Yeah, we can use oh. that one. Okay. Hi, everybody. <coughs> Hi. 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 Hi, Nancy. Hi. <laughs> we had a wonderful Valentine's uh, event today. So thank you for those of you who gave your hands and helping out with that. It was really nice. Um, Kevin Sue was amazing, and the Young at Heart course sang for us today, so it was lovely. Uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to bring you up to speed at some of the things that we have going on. Uh, we're starting to show regular documentaries once a month in the computer room, and that's been picking up speed. Uh, we do have some intergenerational c collaborations going on with both the UMass and Smith College. Uh, Smith was here earlier helping with Brown Bag, uh, and that will continue on. The Northampton High School Key Club made us Valentine's for our party today, as along with a local preschool. So there was a Valentine in everyone's play setting today, which was nice. Uh, just some of the other things that are coming up. We have a, uh, we had hoped to have a nice response to both introducing Spanish and French, and I'm happy to report that we have a Spanish one and a Spanish two class that are filled to capacity already, and French is working its way towards being filled. So obviously a need um, and a great response to that, so we're very excited about that. We have a new foot nurse on board. Her name is Piper Sagan, and she will be here monthly. Uh, Big Y is coming this spring to give us a nutritional program. I've been having some hot chocolate chats with people this month, and that's been going nicely. I've had some people come in and say, um, giving you some feedback on some of the things that we have had, we are having, and their response to them, but also some suggestions for things that they would like to see. So that's been really nice, and I've enjoyed getting to sit down and chat for just a few minutes with some people that I have never met before. So that's been nice. Uh, I'm also thinking about maybe doing something similar in the spring where we go outside and walk together for a half an hour and chat while we're walking. So. Stay tuned for that. Uh, we do have an author of the month uh, booked for the next several months coming up, and thanks to Jean who's for helping coordinate the artist of the month as well. Uh, we have artists for the, for the entire year scheduled, thanks to her hard work, and so that's really exciting. And <clears throat> excuse me, we get constant positive feedback about uh, both of those programs, and especially uh, the art in the hallway and um, the staff, when we're just walking down the hallway, can see how many people stop and really enjoy that. And we do get constant comments about that. And it's really a unique program we have here in Northampton. And so very appreciative to all the work that goes behind the scenes with that gene um, and making that happen. Uh, we do have a new Northampton Neighbor City Circle that's been happening, which is nice. It started in January with a really large turnout. 
and that's going to happen here on the fourth Thursday of the month. Uh, we're working on the Health and Safety Fair coming in May, so stay tuned. Uh, just a couple of other interesting things going on. We did receive a grant uh, for, um, to, for some programming, uh, cultural-based programming, so we're going to be working on that coming up in the spring and into June, and that will be focused around Latin cultures. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We also have a new program starting in April on the Constitution. It'll be a nice uh, group <coughs> uh, meeting every week to talk about the Constitution, and we hope to bring in some local historians and also a local teacher from the public schools to meet with that group to talk about the Constitution. It seems sort of uh, important these days with elections and such. Uh, we have an improv dance class that is going to be starting. Uh, that will be coming up in April, and we're hoping to ramp up some of our evening programs with, uh, to begin with, um, a couple of art classes we're going to try out in the early evening hours so that people who are working during the day might be able to come and take a, an early evening art class. Uh, and lastly, I just wanted to mention that we are working with Forbes Library uh, on an oral history project. You may have read about it in the Chronicle. Uh, if not, please do read the article in the Chronicle, and if you're interested at all in it, please be in touch with me. I've had five people already come forward to say that they're interested in working on the project, and it's really exciting, uh, and it can be whatever we want it to be, not just oral history, but um, it, I don't want to give too much away, keep the suspense building, but uh, I think it's going to be a really nice program, and we, have, um, we also have a college student that's going to be working with us on that. So that's something that will be starting as soon as we can kind of gather and, and really get our focus going. But uh, we'll be going through the summer and into the fall. Uh, so we're just, I'm just really super excited about that. Uh, did any of you have any questions for me specifically about any programs? Or if you've heard any feedback, negative, positive, or something you're dying to know about I, I just want to thank you for all the things that you're doing. Oh, you're so sweet. And thank it's you. amazing. And uh, I was going to sign up for the Spanish class, but it was uh, already I know. So now I'm checking the dates for the French class. Okay, so yeah. So I can sign up for that. Okay, so a, a awesome. a broad variety of things, and I've yeah. got a lot of comments from people um, about all the things that you've been talking about, and especially people who listen to NPR or the Oral History Project. Yeah, it's really of that one where it's sort of like feedback off of that. Really exciting. So um, I it's think a great all opportunity. Of these things are really exciting. Good. So, so thank you. I'm glad you're excited. Also, yeah. all the decorations. Oh, thanks. So every it looked great in here today, and yeah, we're trying to keep it fresh. So thank you. And I have a nice group that's helping out with that. So. Yeah, thank you. You're inspiring yeah. me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. Well, thank you. My oh, goodness. Thanks. That's so nice. Yeah, one of my friends loves the Latin dance class. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. Good we have feedback a for that. Great Latin dance teacher. She's wonderful. So, yeah, come take a dance class or an art class or a French class or. A cooking class, yeah. I just went, I just went in to see Kevin's cooking class. Do you know he's making like some kind of chocolate, chocolate creations it's out, a chocolate of, class. out of <laughs> black beans, and it smells like brownies. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> How are you? So he's like a, there now? He's a magician. <laughs> he's a magician, honestly. So it's very exciting. Okay, great, wonderful. Thank you, folks. Oh, okay. Thank you. I just remembered there was one thing I wanted to tell them. The board, my emails been hacked. Mom. You've probably been getting emails oh, no. from me saying, "Call me" and stuff like that. It's not me. Send so me money. I just <laughs> found out. Yeah, I just found out from Ben sending me an email saying he was excusing himself. That there's an email called it's board b o a r d p r e s board pres forty four at aol dot com. That is not me. So if you could eliminate it from your computer, from anything that you send, somebody's trying. Oh, no. Yeah. If you do answer them, they're going to ask you for a hundred dollars. Yeah, Google and it's not that's me. What happened to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's for me. Oh, and the other little um, joke to the board is that um, we will be um, having nominations coming up for our June elections, so we're going to need a nominating committee maybe next month, and um, and people that want to run for officers. I know the Dennis 
Is it going to stay on as uh, life support? I can't, as about, only because of the conflict of interest up with uh, elderly. And some of us, if you check uh, Northampton.gov, some of our um, names here are over. Your brain. Your brain. Your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Assignment. Your, your term. term. Your term. Your term. Your term. Your term reign. Okay, thank you. Jerry Oh, yes. Sorry. Could you? Could someone just circulate that list so we all know who's... It's on the city website. I understand. Could someone circulate oh, okay. it to all of us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to do that. Dennis, you. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. Thanks. And also wondering how many in total slots that will be open. Because I think I read somewhere there's still, is it for just three? Um, but now? Well, there have been some applications that are being processed now, so. So things will Yeah, build we'll, up. we'll know. We'll know once I hear from the mayor about who he's selecting. But also, um, the state law and our bylaws, it actually is a minimum of 11 to a maximum of 15. So it's up to the mayor to decide how many he or she uh, council members to be on the council. So currently we have 13, meaning we're not at 15. Um, but basically it's it's the mayor's office, as Marie said, who takes the applications for all board, cities, and commissions and decides uh, when and who and how to appoint people. So that's just So if someone's interested, I get it. They would contact the, public, the mayor's the office. That we're inviting them to approach the mayor? They well, you go to the mayor's apply. office and apply. You can also yeah. apply online. Yeah. Got it. Just okay. wanted folks to know that. OK, thanks. All right, we're ready for the director's report. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Um, so, I'm, um, some of some of my report is probably a little redundant from last time. So, um, but I'm going to start with the guidelines booklet um, that has been um, the first draft has been available for feedback um, at the front desk and also has been posted on the city website um, now for for about a week um, and we've gotten some feedback we haven't gotten a ton of feedback um, and I think what will probably our next step will be is um, to to go through the feedback as it's coming in this next week um, the subcommittee to go over that and set another meeting to sort of discuss the feedback um, and I, but I did just want to um, reiterate that the guidebook is based on senior centers, examples from 30 other senior centers. So everything that is in that guidebook is actually something that occurs in every senior center, um, including standards of independence, uh, code of conduct, and um, Northampton. Speaking so, yeah, no, um, no comments. You know. so um, anyway, I, um, I'm, you know, I, I brought all that material forward for the subcommittee to to go through, and um, the Massachusetts Councils on Aging uh, is the institution which we work underneath um, and who supports us in these things, and the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, and so we do build everything that we do off of the model that is set by our governing agencies. Um, um, and another another thing that um, has occurred that um, is unfortunate, but I think it won't really hold us back too much, is that there was, in the bid process for the fitness services contract, there was a um, mathematical error um, that was not um, naked, you know, to the naked eye, if it was if it was obvious, we could have gone forward, but it wasn't obvious enough to a lay person looking at that. So we have to rebid. So we are doing that. Um, last time, I did get four requests to see the bid, and I only got one actual uh, proposal. So um, I'm kind of anticipating that's what will probably happen again. Um, uh, City Council voted to um, allocate, uh, to allow us to sign a five-year contract for credit card processing. 
And so we are working on moving towards onboarding that system so that we can provide better customer service um, and we'll cut down on the lines. I think a lot of people get frustrated standing in lines here. Um, so I, you know, we're all excited about that, but I think it's going to take a little while to kind of um, work through all the procedural things we need to set up for that. Um, let's see. So um, we're moving forward with our partnerships with the BNA, Northampton Neighbors, and Forbes Library, as well as the things that Nancy mentioned about intergenerational um, supports that we're getting from the community. Um, we have just launched the transportation survey as well, and we're hoping to get a lot of good feedback on that as we um, sort of look at uh, feedback and at our data based on previous um, use, how it's going to be best to sort of um, tease that out a little bit so that we're providing for all the needs in a more efficient way. Um, there is not any current update on the architectural study that's going on. I'm still waiting for drawings from the architects um, and some of the things that we brought up around what needs to be upgraded in the lobby and things like that. And I think that some of those conversations about like what makes the center feel welcoming and um, how we have things set up for reception and things like that will, will be part of the focus group that Jay will be telling you about in a little bit. Um, so let's see. Um, the book exchange, um, we've, uh, we've been working with Forbes and they are going to be supplying us with books um, that they get a lot of donations so we won't have to actually process donations um, we, we often were um, getting a lot of dumping of books in front of the building that would just sit out there um, until we would get here in the morning and find them. And, um, and so this will be a much better solution because they will get the donations and they will go through the books and then they will give us books and we can request certain kinds of books. Um, and so um, right now I'm working with Smith's Vocational to build, the students are going to build us um, a standing like the little free libraries that you see all over the country now we're going to have um, a, a cabinet like that that will get restocked regularly so that we're getting books in and people will be able to take the books and they can also you know put a book in that's in good condition um, so I think that will solve some of the, the needs around um, missing the books um, and you know, if that's very popular, we uh, we may add a second one. We're going to make sure it's on wheels so that we can tuck it away when we need to move. We often have to move furniture in, into another room for big events and things like that. So um, it'll be portable. Um, let's see. So. The. Um, We, one new thing that we're doing is that we've had a photographer take pictures of all the staff and we're going to have um, them some, we haven't figured out where we're going to put them yet, but we're going to have a place where people can see each person's um, picture and know what their role is so that, um, because we don't always get to meet everyone who's coming here and it helps to put a name to a face. Um, and let's see. We've had some ads in the Gazette recently. I don't know if people have seen them, but um, we are trying to um, advertise to the general public so that they're they're letting their family members know or their um, uh, parents know about what's going on here, um, or new seniors who are aging in and aren't thinking about it yet. Might they might see our insert and they might also realize that there are things here for them that they might be interested in um, and especially because I think a lot of people still don't realize that we're open in the evening or on the weekend um, so we're just trying to get get a lot of sort of cross pollination in terms of getting the word out about things um, what else um, we are trying to get more Facebook uh, likes so tell your friends 
people to like us. Um, and let's see, we have in the spring, I think I've talked about this already, but Live Your Best Life workshop will be starting um, in April. And that will be a, um, a six week uh, class on building resiliency and skills around so that um, people who deal with any kind of stress or as they're aging have more tools for dealing with crises or transition or a family member's illness or whatever. Um, and I'm excited about that happening. happening. Um, uh, Row Food Northampton has just submitted a grant in, um, we, we're, we're partnering with them to expand on the farmer's market this summer um, with the addition of a um, bulk food buying club and um, pre-prepared meals. Uh, so I'm hoping that that is going to be sort of a pilot and then if that goes well, there's a lot of interest, we will expand on that as a year-long program after that. Um, let's see. The annual appeal has been sent out in the census. I don't know if people have seen those envelopes in their census mailing, but um, we're already getting donations coming in through that. And I think probably in, um, in March or April, depending on where things land with the guidebook um, implementation, we'll be starting to launch um, some program evaluations also so we can get feedback about program development um, and also sort of just tuning into what's happening in programs that are, are happening now. So that's, I did speak about the credit cards, yeah. Um, that's gonna take a little while, but um, I, think, I think that's, much what I have to report. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Jay, I'll put you on the report. Sure. Okay. So, um, to piggyback on to what Nancy said earlier, I just wanted to bring you up to speed on the concert today. We sold 89 lunches, which is huge for our kitchen staff and kitchen you know, uh, Easter yeah, volunteers. It is a lot. It's very busy. And for the air conditioning. Yeah, and for, and for, fund, <laughs> for fundraising. And 140 concert tickets were sold, or were given away and sold. We gave away several. So, um, so that's just some information there. I also wanted to make a note about the minutes. Um, uh, minutes are not recorded verbatim. Um, we try to capture uh, the essence of what's been discussed and the minutes do go out to the, the council for review and then when you vote on them, you know, you're, you're saying that you agree that this was the essence of what was discussed in the meeting. So, um, a focus group has been formed to discuss um, and provide feedback about what it means to be a warm and welcoming senior center. Um, Dennis and Cindy are going to moderate that group and they will be meeting in uh, early March. So we'll look forward to getting a summer report about um, that comes out of that focus group. We're still working to put together a volunteer recognition and rules workshop. My goal is to have that ready to go by mid-March. Uh, fitness cards, we sold 150 so far since we started. Uh, comes to 2250. And so far, this has covered the cost of the YMCA lid classes. So it's very popular pilot so far. Um, we're going to continue to collect that data. And just for, out of um, curiosity's sake, I've kind of totaled up which classes are getting the most attendance with the cards. And it turns out it's the low impact that's, that meets on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 336. Um, basically $336 sold for that particular class. And then there's a smattering along the other classes. So we'll be looking at that data too to, dis to decide you know, if we're gonna continue with various um, exercise classes. Um, we do have two new interns from Holyoke Community College, uh, Kayla and Lindsay. They started a couple of weeks ago. Um, they're from the human 
services uh, group from uh, that class and they're doing a practicum which will end in May. And then we have a student from um, Northampton High who will be starting with us in early March working a, couple, a few hours each afternoon um, to uh, assist her with her, her resume as well. Um, we've had some challenges maintaining a steady temperature in the building. We discovered that one of our heat pumps was down and that's been repaired. We also found out that uh, insulation is failing in several areas of the building. So it's made it very difficult to keep the zones at the right temperature. Those, those uh, problems are being addressed right now with our uh, central services. Is that why we feed our cold? Yes. <laughs> okay. As Marie mentioned, the annual appeal did go out. So far we've received $1,665. 10% of that, so their uh, folks are encouraged to earmark their donations if they like to. And so far about 10% have gone earmarked to be support, which provides um, help provide programs to reduce isolation, provide education, recreation, and transportation. 2% uh, has gone to be earmarked for financial aid fund, and then 88% has gone to basically any, any programming or any financial need. So that's encouraging. We just started that, and we're continuing to get those uh, donations in on a daily basis. And that is my report. Anybody have any questions? Jay, you're welcome. Okay, so we're at old business, and I, what I'd like to do is ask the council if they have any um, any old business that they'd like to discuss or questions that arise arose for them that they'd like to speak about. Mm -hmm. Deborah, yeah. I don't know if I might have brought it up before, so I was just curious okay. uh, whether. Kevin and the folks making the food are able to provide dessert foods, for example, for people with diabetes. Other, in addition to fruit, or, or just making it a, a having there be an option. A dessert, a dessert option. Yeah. For, uh, that's like sugar free. Yeah. Yeah, or low, very low sugar. Yeah. Um, my husband is a physician and he has diabetes and one of his favorite expressions is diabetics like to have dessert too. <laughs> so, and, and a lot of people say, well, we have fruit or some people say, well, we're gluten free and we're like, no, we, so I, I'm just putting it out there and, and I was curious if that's something on his radar. We, we do, sometimes um, we get, when people register for lunch, they, they let us know that they have dietary needs, and then we pass on that information to Kevin, and he actually makes, you know, vegetarian options nice. or other things. So if someone has requested that, um, well, I'm sure he, he can certainly accommodate that. Oh, yeah. That's sure. very welcoming. Yeah. Speaking of ways to make it <laughs> yeah. more welcoming. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we do get yeah. we, we do get specific requests for um, you know, I want to make sure it's gluten gluten free and he'll make a gluten free meal or version of the meal that he's already preparing. Right. Um also um I, I don't recall hearing any diabetic you know or sugar free requests, but we get gluten free, we get um, low salt requests, right. vegetarian yeah. requests. <laughs> and with February being Heart Health Month, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm sure Kevin does that year round, anyways. Heart yeah. healthy. But well, we do get requests at the bistro that somebody wants fruit instead of the dessert or whatever. But there is another substitute, yeah. and whom we provide that as soon as they ask. Oh, that's great. And always making sure that there's fruit at the minimum. That's what I do at the Valley Jewelers Senior Luncheons. We make sure there's fruit and yep. a sugar-free option. But you know what? Somebody who um, is a diabetic, you know, if you were a diabetic, you might get tired of being told, well, have an apple. You know, you might want to have a sugar-free brownie yeah. sure. like everyone else sure. or a cookie. <laughs> yeah. So I think Kathy has something yeah. to add. I was just to say in the coffee shop, we have hard boiled eggs and we have yogurts. Yeah. The only thing we don't have, we don't have any cold drinks that are sugar-free other than Diet Coke right now. Because the seltzer is sugar. Yeah. 
Yes, there are sugar in the system. Oh, but we do have, you know, there are those, Not much. Um, there are a lot of seltzers that have no sugar, no added sugar. We usually have a Thank you. Could you stop speaking in the audience, please? Excuse me. Oh. Got it. Well, you know, got it. had to make some kind of a noise. You were I know. Paying I attention. heard you. Sorry. Before you clap. Okay. Anybody on to you? Okay. So how about we do business? Things for next month's agenda. Anybody have an idea that they want something on last time? All right, that we can adjourn. So oh, what? I want. <laughs> oh. I just want to correct the date on the bottom of this page. It is leap year, so the next meeting is March 12th, not the 13th. Usually February and March are duplicate numbers, not this time. So our next meeting is March 12th. So, so moved so to adjourn. adjourn any second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? It passes.